Happy Scrapper, Happy Scrapper, Happy Scrapper, whoa Get ready to watch a Happy Scrapper video Happy Scrapper, yeah, yeah, here we go Okie doke, Happy Scrappers, in this video we're going to be talking about flatware or silverware uh, we're going to cover forks, spoons, uh, other utensils, and some trays. We're not going to get into uh, like tea sets and, and uh, that kind of thing. We're going to cover that in a different video. This is primarily going to deal with forks and spoons and uh, like stuff you get in a, in a silverware set. So let's get started. Okay, the first thing you need to do in scrapping flatware is you need to identify what you've got. Uh, you can do that. Most everything is going to be either marked with a manufacturer's name or you identify the pattern and the pattern is what you see uh, the decoration on the handle or a printed name on each piece. And you need to do that first because there's going to be certain manufacturers and certain patterns that are worth more than the silver that's in, in these. So, for instance, uh, this fork, we know it's uh, sterling silver because I don't know if you can see that there or not. Uh, it says sterling and it's made by Reed and Barton which is a very popular uh, manufacturer. So that's sterling silver, that's solid, that's that's 92.5% silver, because sterling silver is not 100% silver because it has to have things added to it to, to you know give it strength and, and uh, make it where you can, can use it. Now this has a silver look to it and you would think uh, you know you found that in an old silver set now this is what's called silverware I mean that's that's where the term silverware comes from it looks like it's silver but it's not it has nothing silver it's got a stainless steel blade and this is just a, a different alloy mix to make it appear to be silver it has no precious metals in it whatsoever. Now this one is, if we can get it close enough you can read what it says on here, but uh, it says Plymouth Silver Plate. So this is silver plated. Uh, it's going to have a, either a copper or, or nickel or something inside it uh, and it's going to be silver plated. Some of these you'll see uh, ES, no, ESPN's the uh, sports channel. EPSN, electroplated silver, or something like that. Uh, anyway, that, that indicates that it's uh, silver plated, either nickel or copper. Now, this piece is again from uh, Reed and Barton, and it is the Francis One pattern stainless steel I mean sterling silver but if you can see there it has this indication here and that's a Fox R line I think is what that is anyway that indicates that this particular piece was produced in 1907 so the collector value of this would exceed even it being solid uh, sterling silver. Now some other items like this is from the same uh, family, uh, the Francis one from uh, Reed Barton, but it has uh, a blade that, let's see if you can read that again. Anyway, I don't know if, you can, if I can get it. Anyway, it says mirror steel, and that's just another term for stainless steel. 
but this handle is hollow there's nothing on the inside of this handle and it is solid st uh, sterling silver so this piece would have a uh, scrap high scrap value because of the solid solid silver and or st solid sterling silver I'll get it out here in a minute uh, you know so that you would look for that for collectors and that kind of thing now it, to resell to a collector, forks and, and teaspoons by far are the lowest value because uh, you, you would think that's what they would be looking for to replace much, but most of the sets have tons and tons of those in it. For a high resale value, you want to find something like this item that's from uh, 1907, you know, something. Most of the silverware that you see on the market uh, with collectors and antiques was, you know, during the height of, of manufacturing was around in the, in the 50s. Uh, ever since then, it's been dropping off and dropping off. And within the last 10 to 15 years, people don't give silverware sets to newly married couples anymore. It's just, it's out of fashion. Uh, so most of the time, like this salad, individual salad fork, uh, the actual sterling silver value in it would be more than the collector value. Uh, you know, you can go online and see this fork being sold for $49 or $59 a piece. Let me rephrase that. Listed at that price. That may or may not be what it's selling at. So, you know, if you wanted to go on ETSY or eBay or something like that, and list this fork, uh, you know, want to sit on it for a while, then, then you may get that kind of money out of it. Uh, if you sell it to, uh, you know, a, a, like a replacements company or something like that, uh, the more they have of it, the less they're going to pay regardless of the, of the uh, sterling silver value. So you need to group these together and Make sure you got things identified and then see what you're looking at. Now, let's go a little bit further and look at what some of the identifications can be on the back of your flatware. All right, some of the things you can look for on the back of your flatware to identify as sterling silver, it will simply have the word sterling. It could have the words sterling silver it could be marked 925 925 forward slash 1000 uh, 92.5 percent pure or it can have embossed images like you see here uh, a line facade or a line with a uh, one paw raised there and that's for sterling that's made in England. Uh, thistle mark, uh, that's for sterling made in Scotland. Uh, a crowned harp, that's for sterling made in Ireland. Uh, a sitting lady holding a staff, that's for uh, uh, Britannia silver, which is a little finer, uh, a higher quality silver, uh, higher than the 92.5. And silver plate, uh, you would look for, the, of course, the word silver plate. Uh, it could be marked with EPNS, and that stands for electroplated nickel silver. It could be uh, have the the uh, initials E P B M. That's uh, electroplated Britannia metal. That's a little higher quality plated silver. It could have just E P for electroplated, or uh, B P for uh, the Britannia plate. And other uh, hallmarks you may see on some flatware or brushes or, or that kind of thing it may say coin silver or printed just the the letter coin and that's actually just 90 
50% silver. Now if it's marked uh, nickel silver or German silver, it has no silver in it at all. Those two, the nickel silver and the German silver, are just composite metals to make it look silver. All right, the last thing we'll look at in this video is uh, serving trays. And uh, I do have a lid over there I'm gonna use just as reference. But most of the serving trays you're gonna see are gonna be electroplated nickel silver. And again, there's gonna be two values. There's gonna be an actual collector replacement value for the tray as it is. And then there's gonna be, of course, the scrap value. And uh, this tray is a pool silver company from up in Massachusetts. And uh, I forget what the, the, well, I was trying to think of what pattern. Anyway, I can't, it's got to do with this roping around the outside. But uh, this is a, a like a meat serving tray. This or whatever meat would be there, and then uh, maybe some type of dipping sauce or something on either side of it. Uh, now this, as you can see, the green in it. This is going to be a copper base that the electroplate silver is attached to, and that in a good scrap yard uh, would bring at least brass value uh, because of the, the copper that's in it. And, and that's a surefire way to tell is that green uh, oxidation there is that that's from, from copper. The regular silver is gonna just have a dark uh, oxidation on it. So that's gonna have a heavy content of copper in the nickel base. Now it won't, you know, you, you can hit this with a grinder and if you see real bright copper in it, that, that's pretty rare because copper just doesn't have enough strength to withstand, uh, you know, even being a fork. If this was pure copper, as thin as it is, I mean, as soon as you picked it up, it would bend down like a paper plate at a picnic. Uh, now this tray here is just a pot metal base. Uh, some people will call it German metal, but it's really not even that. It's just a, uh, just a junk metal uh, that's been polished to look like silver. I don't know if you can see this was made in Japan uh, for aluminum housewares company in St. Louis. So it's an aluminum base, uh, but it's still like a pot metal. It's not pure aluminum. It's almost like cast aluminum. Now in contrast, this lid is a uh, cast handle and in a pure silver uh, base or, or dome to the lid. And the weight in this is in the handle. This uh, lid there is very, very thin. So you wanna, you wanna pay attention first of all, it's just like the forks and stuff, you know, make sure you get that pattern because that's where your value is gonna be. If this particular piece was cleaned up really nice, uh, you're looking at somewhere between 10 and $25 for the, the tray. Now, scrap value in that right there, you're probably looking at somewhere around $3. Uh, at uh, copper or brass right now, at the late, latest I seen brass was uh, like a dollar uh, forty or something like that. So that would uh, there's probably two pounds there. So the, you know, as I always with everything, scrapping out and going to a scrapyard is the least value of anything. So if you have any questions, please leave them down below, and I'll try to help you out what I can. But that is a kind of a overall of scrapping out uh, flatware. We're also gonna come up with a video in the next couple of weeks with uh, using tea sets. Uh, another thing that you'll see a lot of silver in is they made uh, hair, well brushes, and I forget what they call it now, but 
not a Victorian set. But anyway, it's like they had silver plated and solid sterlings, uh, say solid, solid, and sterling silver uh, brushes, combs, and uh, ladies wear uh, in that. I don't know what I'm trying to say. Anyway. That covers that. <laughs> so look for that video in the, in the, in the next coming weeks. And uh, thank you for watching. And always, happy scrapping.